We welcome our distinguished witnesses today, both of whom are members of the House Judiciary Committee. But as is our custom, if you would both please rise, we'll begin by swearing you in. Do you and each of you swear that the testimony that you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Thank you very much. Please be seated and let the record reflect that both witnesses responded in the affirmative. I will now begin by introducing today's witnesses. The first witness is the Honorable Jason Chaffetz. Representative Chaffetz has been a member of the House Judiciary Committee since first coming to Congress in 2009. Representing the 3rd District of Utah, he is a member of the Judiciary Subcommittee on Courts, Intellectual Property, and the Internet, and the Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, Homeland Security, and Investigations. Since 2015, Mr. Chaffetz has served as Chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Our next witness is the Honorable Ron DeSantis. Since being elected to the U.S. House in 2012, Representative DeSantis has served on the Judiciary, <coughs> Foreign Affairs, and Oversight and Government Reform Committees. He is currently the Chairman of the Oversight Committee's National Security Subcommittee and the Vice Chairman of the Judiciary Committee's Subcommittee on the Constitution and Civil Justice. Welcome to you both. Your written testimony will be entered into the record in its entirety, and I ask that each of you summarize your testimony in the time that you are allotted. To help you stay within that time, there is a timing light on your table. You guys know how this works. When the light turns red, it signals that your time has expired, but uh, given uh, the uh, uh, importance of this, we have allotted uh, additional time to each of you and for the video that uh, the chairman has brought with him as well. We'll begin with Chairman Chaffetz. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I appreciate uh, your holding this hearing and your indulgence. And, and to the ranking member Conyers, I enjoy a good working relationship with you and uh, I enjoy your friendship and I expect that to, con to continue in the future and, and I appreciate the discussion today. I also want to note and thank uh, Chairman Issa, he was the chairman of the Oversight Committee when much of this work was happening, many of these hearings were happening, and through his good uh, work and tenacious uh, approach to this, uh, it was an important step and it wouldn't be here today, quite frankly, without the good work and leadership of, of uh, Daryl Issa. Uh, this is really a, a simple case in my mind. When Congress asks you a question, you're expected to give a truthful answer. And when Congress issues a subpoena, Compliance is not optional. Imagine if a taxpayer fail, failed to comply with an IRS summons or subpoena. What would they do to you? If they ask you for those materials, you're expected to produce those materials. And if you don't, they're going to take you to court and they're probably, gonna, probably going to win. The IRS targeting scandal was un-American. The IRS is the most powerful and feared entity in the United States. The First Amendment rights of citizens were trampled upon. Now, in fairness, Mr. Koskinen, as the commissioner of the IRS, was not there for the initial targeting. He was brought in by President Obama as a turnaround artist, somebody who would work hand-in-hand -hand with Congress to fix the problem. From my perspective, he didn't fix the problem. He made it worse. There have been numerous hearings, letters, and subpoenas issued by a variety of, of committees. Now, the IRS is no stranger to a summons or a subpoena. They know exactly how this works. In fact, on average, they issue about 66,000 summons and subpoenas per year, and they have since 2010. Failure to obey an IRS summons is a criminal violation under 26 U.S.C. Section 7210 and carries with it a fine up to $1,000 and a year in, of imprisonment. If you don't comply, the IRS is going to come after you. They do prosecute. The IRS prevailed in 95% of those cases. Again, compliance with the subpoena is not optional. Providing false testimony before Congress comes with a consequence. At least it should. 